Hello and welcome back to Animated Literacy. This is lesson number 27 from the Story, Song, and Action book. In our last lesson, we learned a hippie hippo story and song and how she hauls those heavy hoses for to make hula hoops at the hula hoop factory. And then when she gets tired or when it's a holiday, she invites all of her friends, Happy Hare and Hector Hound and Hoggy and Hermie Horse over to her house for a holiday hoot nanny where they sing and play instruments. And here's Hippy Hippo playing her harmonica while Hoggy is hammering on his harp. And Hector doesn't have an instrument. Instead, he howls high harmony. Oh! And Happy Hare hops up and down in time to the music while Hermie Horse is stomping his hooves in time to the music. And then when they get really tired, what do they do? They have a cookout and they make hamburgers and hot dogs and plan for their next holiday hoot. So Hippy Hippo sound is one where we pretend that we have a harmonica. Hold your hands like this, like you've got your harmonica in it, and make your harmonica hum. Is your harmonica humming? Is your harmonica humming? Hippy Hippo, Hippy Hippo, Hippy Spells are saying, Hippy Spells are saying, Hing Hong Hing. Hing hong hing. Now our chart of animal sounds and, and sounds of objects is getting longer so that we can play with more and more different things. Last time we played with the sound of a drum and what did that drum say? Rat-a-tat-tat, rat-a-tat-tat. So what did hippie's dr drum say? Had a hat hat, had a hat hat. And what did Polly Panda's drum say? Show me painting. Pat a pat pat, pat a pat pat. What did Rosie Raccoon's drum say? Rat a rat rat, rat a rat rat. So now I've been having you copy me each time I make these sounds. Now I'm going to start pausing and see if you can say the sound before me. And then if you say it correctly, I'll copy you. Or if you're not sure of the sound, um, I'll show you the sound after you've tried to make it. So see if you can make the sound before I can make it. So let's take a look at some of the other things that we've been doing. We had a seal. And what did our seal say? Erk, erk. What did Sadie Seal's seal say when she did her surfing? Cirque, Cirque, did you say that before me? And here's Daisy Dragon. What would Daisy Dragon Seal say? Dirk, Dirk, did you say that one before I could? Let's try another one and I'll, and I'll pause so you can see if you can say it before me. Get out your magic mop. And this time, instead of doing seals, let's go up to owls. What do owls say? Hoot, hoot. And so what is Mimi Mermaid's owl going to say? Moot, moot. Did you say that before me? What would Timmy Tiger's owl say? Toot, toot. And what would Gilda Goose's owl say? Here she is gliding, so be sure you use your muscles. Goot, goot. So let's try another one from our chart now. Here's our sheep, and what is our sheep saying? Ba, ba. So if we have Farley Fox, and he's fishing, what's Farley Fox's sheep going to say? Fa, fa. Did you do that one before me? Here was Jenny Jaguar, and she's juggling. So think of your juggling sound, and what would Jenny Jaguar's sheep say? Jaw, jaw. And here's my jaw, so that makes a real word. Here's Winky Walrus, and Winky Walrus is washing at the wishing well. Let's, for Winky Walrus, let's try our cat. So what is our cat saying? Meow. So what's Winky Walrus's cat going to say? Weow. And here's Kimmy Kangaroo blowing kisses. So she's going k. What does Kimmy Kangaroo's cat say? Keow, keow. Now we need to play with both our consonants and our vowels. 
Last time we did lettuce, how many syllables were in the word lettuce? Lettuce. So there were two syllables. We're going to do another two syllable word today. Only this time we're going to feed our old lady a lemon and then we're going to change the sounds in our word lemon. So let's see what happens when we use our different characters with the word lemon. And again, let's see if you can say them before I can. So if Ollie Ostrich's sound is ah, what is a lemon going to be when Ollie Ostrich eats it? La mon. Did you say that before me? And here's Owl, and he's bumping his head, so he's going ow. So if Owl eats the lemon, what sound is it going to make? Lau mound. Did you do that one before me? If Uncle Upton eats the lemon and he's up in his umbrella tree going, uh, what's the lemon going to be now? La mun. And if Ike eats it, and here's Ike riding his bike up into the sky at night. So if Ike eats the lemon, what's it going to be called? Lie mine. Be sure you've got those muscles moving. And here's actress Annie. What's her sound? Ah, for adding. And so if Annie eats the lemon, what are we going to call it? La man. Did you say that before me? And here's Eve leaping over her green trees. So one hand on your knee and your three green trees up and make it squeak. Eee! And so now if Eve eats the lemon, what's it going to be called? Lee mean. Did you do that one before me? Okay. I've added to our chart now. So last time we learned about hippie hippo. And so now hippie hippos has turned into color. So gradually we're changing more and more of the black and white pictures to color pictures. And those are the ones that we need to know especially well. So each time we learn one of those new sounds, we are putting it into a drawing so that we can make some words with it. So today we're going to be talking about hats. So I want you to think about some of your favorite hats and why you might wear those hats. If it's raining outside, what kind of a hat might you wear? But if it's sunny and hot outside, would you wear the same kind of hat you would wear if it's raining? Do you have a favorite hat? Um, I don't wear hats very often, but I certainly wear them if it's raining. And if it's too hot, I wear them. Or sometimes I'm out working in the yard and I'm cutting branches and leaves and things fall down on my head. And so I want a hat so that things don't get all tangled up in my hair. So you can talk with your parent or your teacher about different kinds of hats and why you might wear them. And in this book, there's a picture of somebody who likes many different kinds of hats. And his name is R.R. Pottle the third, and he loves hats. And here's all the different kinds of hats that he wears. He loved fur hats. He loved fireman's hats and felt hats with feathers tucked in the bands. He loved top hats and tiny hats. He loved silk hats and straw hats. So if you read this book, you'll find out not just about hats, but other things that people like. We're also going to be doing some rhyming today. So I've got some things here that rhyme. First, I have a box. Can you think what might be inside my box that rhymes with box? So let's see. If I reach down inside, can you guess what kind of an animal this is? Here's a fox, and he's what? In a box. Now over here, I have a hat. If I turn my hat over, can you guess what might be in my hat? Here's a hat, and inside it is a rat. I have a favorite song for rhyming that I like to do, and so I'm going to play that song, and we'll rhyme with the things that I just showed you. And this is called A Hunting We Will Go. Oh, a hunt. 
hunting we will go. A hunting we will go. We'll catch a fox, put him in a box, and then we'll let him go. A hunting we will go. A hunting we will go. We'll catch a fox, put him in a box, and then we'll let him go. Catch a rat, put him in a hat, and then we'll let him go. Okay, well today we're going to be writing our own verse for a hunting we will go using some of those things. So I'm going to give you a page that looks like this and we'll be filling out this page so we'll have a verse for a hunting we will go. Let's turn it over on the back and we're going to draw a couple pictures today and then we'll use one of those pictures to complete our song on the front. So let's take out our paper. Let's take out our pen, and on the count of three, let's take the cap off the pen. Ready? One, two, three. Turn your pen around, and on the count of three, put your cap on the other end. One, two, three, and give it a little bit of a push so it doesn't fall off. So now we're going to draw a picture of that rat in a hat. So we're going to start our picture by making the brim of the hat. And on this one, the brim is just going to be a straight line. So now I'm going to draw this picture on this side of my page, and then I'll save this side of the page for my other picture. So draw your line, and show me when you're ready to draw the rat's eye. I'm going to come in a little bit from that end, and up a little bit, make a circle for the eye, and then add the pupil. You can have him looking up or down or wherever you'd like your rat to go. Now a rat has a very long nose. Show me when you're ready to draw the nose. I'm going to come kind of up here and add a dot for my rat's nose. Show me when you're ready for the rat's jaw. I'm going to start from here and make a line up to that nose. Then I'm going to come down from the nose for the back of his head, around, and down to the brim. Show me when you're ready for the rat's mouth. I'm going to make a little curve like this for a rat's mouth. Show me when you're ready for the rat's body. I'm going to start from here and make a curve down to the brim. Show me when you're ready for our rat's ears. I'm going to come right here and make a curve up and a curve up. It almost looks like Mimi Mermaid's letter M. Show me when you're ready for our rat's tail. I'm going to come here. I think I'm going to curl his tail up like that. Show me when you're ready to finish the hat. I'm going to come out just a little bit further on mine. So if you need a little bit more space, you can. Now the top of the hat kind of has a crease in it. So we're going to come down from here, up a little bit, back down, and back up to here. Now this hat has a hat band. And the band just kind of wraps around it, so we're going to make a line here, another line here, and then you can put some little lines. If you want, you can color each of those little shapes a different color, okay? Let's write the word hat. Everybody say the word hat. Hat. What do you hear first? <sighs> Hippie Hippo's harmonica. Now, if we look at Hippie Hippo, we can find what letter to use to spell that sound. What letter does Hippie Hippo use? Hippie uses an H. So we're going to make a small H. Let's make a straight line down. Then let's come halfway back up, curve, and go back down the same distance as the first line. Show me the next sound you hear in hat. Ah, for actor Sani adding. So let's put a circle. We put a straight line to form our letter A. Show me the last sound you hear in hat. Say, hat, hat. What did you hear at the end? T, tickling. And if we look at Timmy Tiger's picture up on the wall, what letter does Timmy Tiger use? A letter T. So make a straight line down, and this one's taller than the A. Come back up most of the way, but not quite all the way, and cross it with a T. And now hat is a noun, so let's put a circle around it and tie the string to the hat. Now we wrote rat last time, so let's do that again. And the more times you draw and label, the faster you'll get at reading and writing these words. 
Oh, when I look at my rat, I forgot something on my rat. My rat should have some whiskers. So let's give him some little lines coming out here, little lines coming out here so he can feel things, okay? Say rat. What sound do you hear first? Rrr for riding. How do we spell that? If we look up at the wall, we'll find an R. So we'll make a straight line down and then a little curve like a hook. Show me the next sound you hear in rat. Rat. Ah, for adding. So I'm going to make a circle again, make a straight line next to it, just like I did down here. And what's the last sound you hear in rat? Rat. Rat. Tickling again, just like we did here. So we're going to come up taller than the A, make a straight line down, cross it, and that's a noun. So we'll put that in a circle and we'll tie the string to the rat. Now we're going to draw something else that has a hat. And people who like to wear hats a lot are cowboys. And here's a cowboy. This is a book called Cowboys from Glenn Rounds. And you can learn about cowboys there. This is about a boy whose father is a cowboy and he wants to grow up to be a cowboy. So this is called Sometime Rider. And it talks about how he watches his dad and the other cowboys so that he can learn to do just like them. And this is a Gail Gibbons book. And this is a true story that you can learn a lot about cowboys and the lifestyle that they live and what cowboys do. So we're going to draw a picture now of a cowboy and we'll put our cowboy in a hat. So we'll come over here to the other side of our page. And this time when we draw our hat brim, we're gonna make it like a great big smile. So make a big curve like that. Show me when you're ready for the top of the hat. We'll come in a little bit from our curve and we'll come straight up, make a little valley in the middle, back down like that. <coughs> Show me when you're ready for the cowboy's head. I'm gonna come with a curved line right underneath the hat. I'm gonna come straight down, straight down, and then show me when you're ready for our cowboy's eyes. I'm gonna make a circle here for an eye, circle here for an eye, and add the pupil. Show me when you're ready for our cowboy's mouth. Here's a nice big smile. Show me when you're ready for our cowboy's nose. Put a little upside down curve there. Show me when you're ready for our cowboy's chin. And come down here. Connect there for his chin. Show me when you're ready for our cowboy's ears. And come up on this side with an ear. Come up on this side with an ear. Show me when you are ready for our cow to finish our cowboy's hat brim. I'm going to come from here, curve way around, and come down underneath this ear. So this is going to be a big hat. Then I'm going to come here, up, around, and down there. So there's our cowboy's hat. Show me when you're ready for our cowboy's shoulders. And cowboys have big, broad shoulders. So we're going to come from here, out, down, come in, and then angle in a little bit. Now we'll come from this side, just like we did there, down, in, and angle. Show me when you're ready for our cowboy's body. I'm going to come from here down, from here down, and give him a belt. And here's his buckle. Cowboys like big belt buckles. Show me when you're ready for the cowboy's shirt opening. I'm going to come here and put a V. Then I'm going to make his collar. So I'm going to come down and make another V and another V on the other side. Show me when you're ready for the buttons or snaps for his shirt. We'll come straight from this one down to towards the buckle. Show me when you're ready for our cowboy snaps or buttons. Here we can put a snap or a button here, another one here, another one here. Show me when you're ready for our cowboy's legs. Let's 
come down here. Now, if you run out of room at the bottom, it's okay. You don't have to have all, the entire legs. But if you have room, go ahead and complete it like I did. Show me when you're ready for our cowboy's feet. Here's a foot. Here's another foot. And we can give him a pocket on this side and a pocket on this side. What are we missing? This cowboy needs arms, doesn't he? So let's come out to the side and down to the pocket. Out a little bit and down to the pocket so he could have his hands in his pockets. And the same thing on this side. Come out a little bit and down to the pocket. Out a little bit and down to the pocket. And so now let's label his hat. So just like we did on this side. Or if you want to, we can come here and give him some hair. So there this cowboy has a little bit of hair going on. Okay, so let's say hat again. Ha! What's the first sound you hear? For humming hot air. And how do we spell that? Just like we did down here with the letter H. What's the next sound? Hat. Ah. And just like we did before, an A. And what's the last sound? Hat. T -t for tickling. And let's put hat in a circle and tie the string on. Now turn your paper over to the other side and let's go back to our rat in a hat and let's finish our verse for a hunting we will go. So put your finger here and say it after me. Oh, a hunting we will go. Oh, a hunting we will go. A hunting we will go. We'll catch a... What, what did we draw on the other side that we can put on this side? A rat. So look at the other side of your page if you need to, or if you can just remember how to write it, go ahead and write it. So rat goes here. Put him in a... So what are we going to put the rat in that rhymes? We had our rat, and we put him in our hat. So write the word hat here. And then we'll let him go. So you can read that over and over and over again. Now think about what you're going to have to put up here so that you can tell me what this says. It says we. Who is we? It's you plus somebody else. Could it be just one other person or could it be more than one person? Could be more. So you can draw a picture of yourself. You have to be there. Then you decide how many people are going to help you catch that rat. And you can add some other people to your picture. Then what else has to be in your picture? You have to have a rat. And where is that rat going to be? You're going to be putting that rat in a hat. So draw a picture of you and some friends catching a rat, putting him in a hat, and you can practice reading this over and over and over again. Thank you for joining me for that lesson. And when we come up next time, we're going to learn about another new character, and then we'll be able to add some more words and some more drawings. So I hope to see you in our next lesson.